Alrighty, what's up everybody? Welcome to Melbourne. We're here at the Crown Metropole, ready for EduTech. This is the view we've got. It's pretty, pretty fancy and thank you, uh, my school, for putting me up in such a great place. It's actually really close to the exhibition center where EduTech's gonna be. So we're gonna head there shortly. It's currently 6.46 in the morning. Steve and I just went for uh, a session in the gym and we are ready to go get coffee shortly. Just waiting for Dave to get out of the shower and then I'll have my turn and we'll be off and running. So welcome to Melbourne, welcome to EduTech. Let's get going. What's up? Welcome to EduTech. We're here on day one. It's Thursday and we're about to get into the, the first speeches and the first presentations. So really excited for that. It's a huge turnout. Looking forward to learning a lot. Let's get into it. I would also like to pay my respects to both elders past, present and emerging elders from all nations, especially all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here this morning. The fact that your students will be working in jobs that have not yet been created. Technology will play a huge role in creating these jobs of the future. Uh, that's enough about me. Uh, just very quickly, if you aren't familiar, how many of you are familiar with ISTE? Have you heard of ISTE before? Oh, look at those hands. I love it. So uh, we are the International Society for Technology and Education. We are the largest nonprofit organization in the world focused on using tech to support learning. And I think we have to accept the fact that, you know, we're not building equivalency to human beings. We're actually building something that we can't do. That is the whole value of AI and technology is not to just repl replicate what we do, but to allow us to expand our own capability, to do things that we can't do. So we just came out of the um, main two sessions at the EduTech conference, and it was interesting that there was quite a bit of uh, different perspectives on AI and its use, different perspectives from departments of education versus like individuals and tech companies. Tech companies obviously being a lot more, um, I guess, optimistic and the, some of the department till people are a bit pessimistic and a bit nervous to use and like rely on AI, I suppose, which is a really interesting um, takeaway from that. Uh, one of the biggest takeaways we got was from a bloke named Richard who talked about the, actually my coffee's here, I'll be right back. Hey. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's important at a conference to drink as much coffee as possible. Uh, I was just talking about the uh, Richard, who is uh, from ITSI, ISTI, ISTI. Um, and he was talking about active versus passive use of technology, not necessarily AI technology, but technology and education. Uh, and passive being just, you know, a content presentation on PowerPoint or on Google Slides or whatever versus active engagement with it where that's using VR, it's students using apps which engage them with the content, all sorts of stuff, which is great. So the Microsoft guy, or his name was Lee, I think, and Richard, they were talking about how AI can be used to support learning in particular, Lee from Microsoft was talking about how AI, particularly those generative AIs like ChatGPT, should be used to ask questions of us and the students rather than give us answers to our questions. So the students should be encouraged and taught to use AI as more of a tool that is a coach for them. It's like a mentor or a, um, a tutor who can ask them questions and ask them to elaborate and develop their own understanding rather than just give them an answer to a question. And the other thing that Richard was talking about was that in their future, and I've talked about this in previous videos, that the future, of uh, the future lives of these students is going to be using AI tools in their just day-to-day -day life and in their job. And Richard was talking about how even now uh, there's teams of people who are not fully human. So there's AI uh, members of teams and students not only need to learn to use AI to develop their own understanding and as a great tool, but they're gonna be using AI like they rely on a team member in a group project. So we teach students all these skills like teamwork and group work. We need to start teaching them to use AI because 
AI team members are going to be their future. So that was a really cool takeaway. Uh, it's currently 10 to 11. So we've got some um, expo floor stuff to do. So we're gonna go in there and take you along for the ride. Say so. <laughs> well, let's put it this way. Early recap is AI is coming hard and fast, and the tech's moving along really quickly. Yeah. And a lot of changes are going to happen fast because corporations can't keep up. And yeah. They're trying to help themselves keep up, uh, which means that education will be a continued laggard and really struggle to change with something changing so fast. Yeah. Um, the representatives from the educational departments are seemingly very adverse to AI in general. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? And it's almost kind of awkward to hear. It's 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 what's dis happening. It's what's disheartening. Oh, yeah. you mean for them? No, it's awkward to hear like what's happening and what's possible, mm. and then it be followed up quite literally by. We don't want to have anything to do with this. Yeah, yeah. One of general pessimism as well. It's <laughs> yeah, like, oh, it's okay. scary. One of the departmental people from New South, New South Wales, I, no, Victoria, mm. literally said, "I am pessimistic about AI's future and like whether it's actually a usable technology." Yeah, yes. it's like the kind of people who were shouting that the internet was a fad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, and it, it makes it very because, like you said, Steve, there's just so much. Uh, out there at Edutech and like so many AI companies and people integrating with AI and then to hear our departments go I don't know guys it's going to be a long slog and we've got to make sure that it's safe and like while all that's true like it's almost like they're just saying look we'll look at it maybe down the road but for now just focus on good teaching and learning yeah <laughs> forget about like the literal yeah. technological landscape yeah, something that is literally changing the world. It's like, ah, oh, we'll just kind of ignore that a little bit and hope for the best. <laughs> no, it's just, well, yeah. maybe maybe we should look into it <laughs> yeah. a little bit more just significantly bit. than, yeah. yeah. Alrighty, good morning. Good morning. It's currently nearly nine o'clock and we're heading to Edutech for the uh, second day on Friday. We're going to our favorite little coffee shop we found here in Melbourne first though, uh, and fuel up on caffeine so that we're ready to hit the day. Lots going on today. Less presentations, I think, and more like seminars and like breakout groups. So hopefully we'll get some footage of me interacting with some other teachers and I'll actually get to talk to a lot more teachers, which would be nice. So uh, yeah, I'll take you along for the ride.
types of graph, in the context of what you're doing as a user, Copilot will work for you in the context of what you can do. It works with you and for you. It doesn't give your data to someone else. It doesn't give your organization data to anyone else. And it respects your boundaries. So that's what um, Graph actually does. And lastly, it's within our apps. So there was a Copilot for Excel, a Copilot for PowerPoint, a Copilot for Teams and so on. One exception. There's this thing called Business Chat, which is the most innocuously named product I think we've ever had. But what Business Chat is, your little friend that sits in Teams, and it's a general um, uh, generative AI system. So you can literally ask it, um, I'm walking in the morning, what are the three most important things I should do right now? And across all of your, uh, your work, your emails, the things you need to respond to, how you work, when you work, it will give you advice about things like that. So um, that's called Business Chat. And it's basically a bot that will help you uh, uh, more, more generally. Everything else lives within the apps and services. So, uses the large language model, OpenAI, uh, uses your data within your context, your organization's data within your organization's context, and it's within inside the apps. The reality is, and you may not hear this very often in these halls, but tech for tech's sake is actually bad for education, and it's bad for our learners, and it's bad for our teaching. But tech used well, tech used effectively, is actually revolutionary in what's going on. And so in my own teaching career, as I began to think about the damage that all these PowerPoints were doing to my sleeping habits, the damage that it was doing to the engagement in my students in the, in the classrooms, I began to look around to go, okay, how can I actually make things better? And I'm sure many of you have seen this model, the summer model. The summer model changed my classroom and it changed my thinking because I began to think about how do I actually make things transformational? How do I actually look at what I'm doing in my classroom and begin to think about tasks and change them and adjust them and move them so that actually I'm redefining what's going on. I'm not just substituting. It's not just textbook to PDF. I can also select this row and say, you know what, I want to make this a multi-column now that I've added a video. So we'll go two columns, um, let's go 40, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take my video, I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to pop it over here in the larger section. Then I'm going to make that full width, so size full width, because that makes sense. I'm going to delete this right here, I'm going to resave that back to the LMS. So that'll full width within the Within that template column, structure, yeah. and that means that if you go ahead and... Uh, after saving to LMS, did I hit save? I did. Let's just refresh it here. This will tell oh, me here, if not I in did. the editor, it'll be way bigger. <laughs> it'll be like that because I've put it in a two column. And then if I go ahead and, for example, and scale that, it's going to keep it with the really Yeah. I like it. So, I'm so glad I cleaned up my desktop and put everything in a folder called desktop uh, <laughs> because it was a mess. Yeah. The other piece I think is on the whole gamification and the fun side is, again, I think our flavor of that is engagement with rigor, right? Yeah. So, how do we make it really fun? You know, because there's no reason for learning to be boring, right? That's right. But learning is also difficult. Yes. It's not easy. It's not, <laughs> if it is, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's about sort of putting those two things together. So how do you make a difficult thing a little more palatable, a little yeah. uh, more, you know, uh, achievable for a student? As teachers, what are we doing to equip ourselves first and then our students for what's coming? Because AI is all around us already. There's talk about what's coming, there's panic about what's coming, there's positivity about what's coming. How are we preparing ourselves as teachers and our students for this? By 2035, every student that we teach will be an adult worker. And as adult workers, they will need to know how to work with machines. So we're not competing against machines, we're going to be working alongside machines. And Richard Kulata from ISTE was talking about this yesterday. They need to be looking at that, how do we use AI for good? Because we've already exploring what the threats could be. How do we use AI to solve problems, really using that design thinking? So our opportunity here as leadership is to make sure that we strike while the iron's hot. We do have conversations about assessment. Because if you are only expecting a five paragraph essay on a topic that ChatGPT can generate an infinite number of unique responses to, 
then of course assessment's not going to have any value. Alrighty, and that is a wrap. We're finished here on the Friday of Edutech. Today was actually really informative, a lot more personal and like more targeted sessions rather than big global presentations. It was um, really, really good. I thoroughly enjoyed today. I thought I was gonna enjoy yesterday way more, but the Friday was better. Met so many cool people, uh, talked about so many different things with others and learnt a lot and reflected on, you know, where we're going with our school and what we can do. It's been a great time and I recommend if you're thinking about going to EduTech in 24, I recommend it. Uh, I'm going to be going, hopefully, again, if my school will send me. And if you go, we can catch up, we can meet up. Uh, it's really cool. There's so many different people here and it's great to see so many people passionate uh, and dedicated about AI, technology, and just, you know, improving the learning of our students in general. So, yeah, off to the airport now and ready to head back to reality away from Melbourne. Melbourne's been great but looking forward to getting back to the Gold Coast for sure. All right.